against the anti-tracker. We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulty. What is going on, guys? Michael J. Crawford, the anti-trekker here. Good to see you. And, uh, yeah, been, been kind of, I've had a rough day. My back was out most of the day. I actually called in sick from work, but, uh, yeah, that was fun. Anyway, uh, let's take a look here. Why was I thinking today was Monday? I was waiting for the stream to start the normal afternoon time. Sorry, Josh. Um, yeah, today's definitely not Monday. Because uh, yesterday I was wearing my Monday shirt, and today I have my Tuesday shirt, so definitely not Monday. Uh, <laughs> Thomas throws a buck ninety nine in right off the bat. Thank you so much. Serving on the quantum sounds nicer than my job. <laughs> oh man, I know that feeling sometimes. Uh, but you want to see number nine, so let's get number nine up and running for you, and then I got some big breaking news for you guys today. I now pronounce you man and turd. You may now kiss. Joshua, what are you doing? <laughs> nothing, nothing. I'm definitely not making you kiss law. I repeat, I am not making you kiss law. I'm definitely not. <laughs> Michael's in the house. Uh, sadly, I'm still alive. Wait, that's not sad. That's good news. We want you to be alive, man. And all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. That would be nice if tall ships were still practical. Uh, D. Newton now says, hey, sorry your back's bothering you. Yeah, it happens. Um, unfortunately, kind of comes with being old and having used your back too much. And Mercer is also in the house, as is Ozzy. Good to see you both. So... I'm going to probably end up showing this a couple of times because I know at the beginning of the stream people are still coming in and stuff, but I'm really excited and I want to show this to you guys because I think that this would be a really, really cool video uh, concept, but it's going to take some time to put it together. Uh, T says, it's me, Junius. I got a new YouTube channel. All right, T Stoney. And now I'm going to, boy, I'm, I'm never going to remember, but... <laughs> Why Why the new name? Is there some significance to T. Stoney? Um, Darren says, all I ask is a short shift and an ocean to plow through. Well, that's because you're a submariner, man. That's, you, you, that's cheating. Um, hurt my back late night, still need to work. That sucks. There's nothing worse than working with when you're hurting. That's... Uh, the breaking news, you're quitting your day job and YouTube full-time. I wish, Josh, I really wish, but I would need a whole lot more than 6,000 subscribers to get to that point. Uh, I'd need to be up, uh, upwards of where, like, Lore Reloaded is. Um, hopefully someday, but not yet. However, I think that as I'm starting to get the hang of the 3D printing stuff, I, st uh, I still haven't mastered it, but I'm getting better at it. Uh, I think that'll help as I can start to get that stuff start shipping out to you guys. Also, I think this 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 video that I'm talking about is going to uh, is is going to actually be a really really good video because a lot of people have done it, but I don't think it's been done particularly well. And I, I'm gonna I'm working on the research, and I also want to make sure that it looks beautiful. And I'm gonna give you guys a single frame sample of what I'm working on and I will tell you that this is my very this is the very first frame from this video uh, this video is going to probably take at least a couple of months to put together but when it hits uh, I'm hoping to get it out by um, you know by the end of the year when it hits I think that uh, a lot of people will enjoy it and some people will hate it but I think that it will be a really good video. So I hope you guys are ready for this because I think it looks really cool. And I only showed it to one other person so far, and that would be Captain George. But we're going to bring it up here, and you got, here it comes. Bam. So this is a 100% scale-accurate representation of a Constitution-class starship and an Imperial Star Destroyer. They are accurate uh, to the millimeter as far as size is concerned. Um, and in fact, you can't really tell from the perspective of this photo, 
but the Constitution class ship is actually directly above the tip of the Star Destroyer. Um, so th that's how uh, how large the Star Destroyer is compared to a Constitution. Um, so obviously, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk as far as me and Captain George talking about, uh, you know, Constitution versus a Star Destroyer. Um, and the, uh, but I am digging and I mean digging and I'm using the research of not just myself, but I'm, uh, I've been picking the brains of people like Trek Yards, uh, Eckert's Ladder puts out some really good information. Of course, Captain George has a lot of information on the, on the, uh, Imperial side of things. And we are going to have, uh, a, a completely accurate representation of not just i mean it's not it's not just going to be ooh shoot shoot blow 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 stuff like that it's going to be we're going to compare the speeds we're going to compare the weapons we're going to compare everything about these two ships and kind of uh get into um uh, what uh you know what makes them tick and mercer says the star destroyer looks too small look how big the bridge is well, I will tell you that based on the actual information uh, from canon of both franchises, this is accurate. Uh, the Star Destroyer is 1,600 meters in length, and the uh, Enterprise uh, is, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember, I think it's 287 meteor, meter, meteors, meters in length, and... That so that is actually a uh, an accurate representation of those two lengths next to each other. Uh, you met the Enterprise bridge. Well, you also have to keep in mind the Enterprise is closer to the camera uh, than the Star Destroyer, um, and so uh, and don't forget the Constitution class starships had aft firing weapons. That I uh, honestly in the in the in in the battle scenario. I don't think that that's going to be a major factor as far as uh, if we look at if I you know not not even considering Enterprise even though Enterprise is technically canon and they did show a Constitution class using its rear firing phasers and torpedoes, um, but the uh, you don't uh, I don't think that's going to be a major factor in the battle and what we've seen in um alpha cannon for the original series is the phasers and photon torpedoes firing forward we've never seen them firing in any other direction um that being said as far as raw weapons i mean the, the star destroyer is just covered with freaking weapons and so that's uh that's going to be a really interesting uh matchup i think and i think that um you know, we need to be fair on both sides. Um, and so, yeah, and, and I've seen that picture before as far as uh, there's the picture that Thomas put up there. And let me see if I can bring up... This This will be something I've not tried to do before. Hold on, bear with me, guys, as I am attempting to we'll go to view and uh, let's see. Yeah, that's not what we want. Oh, shoot, I messed that up. So now let me exit that. I'm, I'm going to get it here for you guys. Um, but I was going to, I'm going to show you the actual, uh, the files that I'm using here. Just a minute. All right, bring that up. All right. And... and perspective wow i am sucking today i tell you all right let me get this come on you all right 
Sorry for taking so long here. I know this is riveting, completely enthralling video here as I'm mumbling to myself while trying to get programs to load. Okay, so let me bring this up here. Um, so this is the obviously the actual scene that I was using. And as you can see, the scale is right. All right. So it all just depends on the angle you're looking at it from. So, but yes, this is, if we compare that to your image, that's pretty darn close. So I think, I think that we're, I think that we're on the right, um, right page there. And a hornet swarm of TIE fighter. Absolutely. Um, how big is the Falcon? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure the exact, uh, dimensions of the Falcon, but I think, uh, if you if you look at the way it was attached to uh, the back of the Star Destroyer's bridge, uh, I think that you're going to uh, see the Falcon would end up being about the size of the top three or four decks of the Enterprise. And so, and yes, I will be taking the TIE Fighters into account. Uh, is that another test of the plaque? It is, in fact, a test of the plaque. A, uh, I'm doing a different type of printing because I've been having uh, a tough time with getting the uh, getting the print right. So yeah, 114 feet for the Falcon. Um, so yeah, that would that would be about right. Uh, about the top three or four decks of the of the saucer section then is what you would what you would see the Falcon as. And uh, but I think it'll be really interesting if we, because, and the tricky part is, and this is where it, we have to check ourselves, all of us, not, you know, if you're, regardless whether you're a Star Trek fan or a Star Wars fan, is we need to look at Alpha Cannon first, as always, and then when, uh, and then only non-contradictory uh, secondary cannon sources if you need to, Um so, tonight on the anti tracker the anti tracker grumbles angrily as he does stuff on his computer. Yes, that is that is the theme of today's show. Although I did do one cool thing, and I'm going to try this out right now. I made me a batch of Romulan ale, so I'm going to try a little bit now, even though nobody's super chatted it. I'm going to anyway because my back hurts, and so helps if I'm looking at the right monitor. Ooh, that's good. All right. Um, so yeah, this uh, this plaque. It's actually an interesting thing when we look at. Uh, I love the Archer shirt. Yeah, Archer shirt is definitely the appropriate shirt to wear when you're drinking, dude. That stuff is illegal. Well, not yet. It will be illegal in a couple hundred years. Uh, one thing that bugged me about Last Jedi is the Falcon when it was on the uh, island looked way too small. Um, you know, I never thought about that, honestly, because there were so many other issues with Last Jedi that, that bothered me a whole lot more than the size of the Falcon. Um, I mean, honestly, that's the least of my concerns when it comes to The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi was such a train wreck of a film. And, uh, so yeah, I'm, uh, Think the Defiant is 170 meters. Yeah, I think you're about right. Uh, the Defiant is actually a lot bigger than it looks. It's um, so if you think about it, that's uh, you know that's more than that's like four and a half times the size of the Millennium Falcon, uh, just in length. And so it's actually the Defiant, if I remember correctly, is like almost as big as the saucer section of the original Enterprise. Um, Yeah, so Falcon is 114 feet. Uh, to put that in perspective, a touring bus is 45 feet, so about you know a little over double, and a runabout is 75 feet long. Yes, and so uh, so a runabout is almost as big as the Falcon. Uh, the Defiant would actually dwarf the Falcon, but then compared to um, say even a Constitution class, or heck, even if you go to like a a sovereign class ship, you know, the uh, an Imperial Star Destroyer dwarfs those ships. But, as the old saying goes, size doesn't necessarily matter. 
Um, 289. Thank you, Josh. I was off by two meters with my... I, I have the numbers on my computer when I was putting that together, but I, for some reason, thought it was 287. Um, the track yards will know where are they when we need them. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and I actually, uh, like one thing uh, as far as like calculating uh, range is going to be a crucial, oh, and track yards is here. Uh, calculating range is going to be a crucial, crucial factor. Track yards says, you see the picture that I put up a little while ago, uh, or did you just come in? Because uh, I'll show it again because it's a beautiful, beautiful picture in my humble opinion. And of course, I'm saying that because I made it myself. Um, so let me bring that back up. Let me, do, 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 do. of course, here, here we go. Grumbling about things on the computer again. All right. So you ready for this track yards and is it, which one is it? This one? Yes. There you go. So this is for a, uh, future video that I am going to be working on. But I'm currently doing a couple of things. There's going to be some animations that I'm working on right now that's going to take some time. Uh, as well as uh, I'm still in the research phase as far as doing a lot of straight up comparisons. Uh, as far as weapons, speed, all, that, all the capabilities of these two, in my opinion, the two most iconic pic uh, ships in cinema. Uh, well... I know technically television and cinema, uh, but I think that this is a matchup that will be a lot closer than people on either side would think. I know that a lot of Star Wars fanboys just say, oh, come on, Star Wars smash the Enterprise like a fly. And a lot of Star Trek fans will say, oh, come on, the uh, Enterprise would cut the uh, Star Destroyer to pieces. So um, is the Franklin bigger than the Millennium Falcon? probably i'd say yeah i'd say probably as far as i know it's like the franklin is only a couple of decks but it's it seems like it's got a lot more internal room so yeah this is and and just so you know trek yards this was my uh the this picture is actually one that i made today uh using uh blender and photoshop and so those are the both ships are 3D models that I'm using. Uh, they're not 100% perfect 3D models, but the scale of the two ships is completely accurate. That Star Destroyer is 1,600 meters, and that Constitution is 289 meters. So they are uh, accurate to each other. So even though the you know doesn't have every little detail in them, but it's good enough for what I'm working on here. Uh, I would love to do a studio level model, but I, first of all, I would need a better computer <laughs> and then I would also need a whole lot of time to make it happen. Uh, am I going to see Creed 2? I probably will. I liked Creed. Uh, I thought Creed was a worthy successor to the Rocky franchise. So I am, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Is that the refit version? As far as the Enterprise? No, that is the classic Constitution. That is the Enterprise from the original series. And kind of what I was thinking of as far as this matchup. Say hi to my daughter Cassie who's watching with me. Hi Cassie! Good to see you. Your dad is definitely tells a lot of bad jokes, but I'm glad you are with us. And uh, and so I'm just messing with your dad. He's a really nice guy. So and and you better eat all your vegetables and do what he says. So oh, she's 18. So in that case, yeah, forget it. You know, just get his credit card and call it a day. <laughs> so um, my daughter's 23, uh, uh, Captain. So I feel your pain. Um, did they mention Cybok at all in Discovery? No. They never mentioned Cybok. They only the uh, they mentioned Spock and Sarek and Amanda, but no Cybok. I don't think is ever mentioned. Um, speaking of the Falcon solos out on Blu-ray, yes, yes it is. Oh hi, Anti Trekker <laughs> uh, and Trek Yards. We love you, Captain. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, but here's what I was thinking of uh, as far as the uh, the matchup is if we're going to do a Star Trek versus Star Wars matchup, there's a million different matchups you can try to do. 
and you can pick out various hero characters and stuff like that. But the problem with picking out hero characters, like for example, uh, I know that Captain George uh, loves to talk about Admiral Thrawn, right? Because Admiral Thrawn is legendary in uh, as far as his uh, military tactics and all that good stuff. And of course, uh, Star Trek fans would go with, you know, Kirk, Picard, Cisco, whoever. And then you have to start saying, well, but this character would think of this and this character. So I, 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 at that point, I'm like, okay, no matter what, it's just whoever you're a fanboy of, you're going to pick them as the winner. And so, but you can do a fairly objective comparison of the actual vessels and their capabilities so assuming that you have an equally good commander on both a star destroyer and a constitution class who would win in a straight up battle uh am i in a different room no it's it's rearranged a little bit but it's not this is the same room i've, I've been in um in fact part of the reason for the rearranging is the 3d printer is it's not horribly noisy but it's noisy enough to be a little bit of a distraction so i moved my bookshelf to right here so that the printer's on the other side of the bookshelf creating a little bit of a sound barrier there um don juan says hey anti tracker everybody anti tracker explain to me why you hate seven of nine <sighs> and what are you looking at off camera well check here i'm actually i have three monitors here so my main monitor is right here this is where i have the chat and stuff uh, there's a monitor right here that I have my broadcasting software and my audio software for the live stream. And then my third monitor is up here and that's where I have like my discord and stuff. Um, so now Mercer says the enterprise can just beam torpedoes onto a destroyer. Yo, technically you're correct. However, I'm only going to be using common strategies because you could also argue that the star destroyer could do a suicide run at hyperspace to try and t to take out the enterprise uh i'm not going to be using tactics that are one-offs uh or ta uh, or tactics that would not be considered uh shall we say humane or even uh, legal, depending on where they are so beaming an effective uh uh, tactic, but I, I'm not going to use that in this comparison. Uh, lasers can't even penetrate our navigation shields. That's an interesting line that people um, uh, use. However, the uh, the problem with that is that turbo lasers are not technically lasers, and so I know that sounds silly, and I'm and I know it seems weird because even though I'm a Star Trek fanboy more than a Star Wars fanboy, and here I am defending Star Wars, but the idea of turbo lasers is the reason laser is even in the name of the weapon is because it uses a laser to charge or turbocharge plasma that it fires. It's actually a plasma-based weapon, and so think of uh, Romulan weapons is more apropos to what they are but like romulan weapons they have a limited range compared to phasers um torpedoes aren't activated till launch beaming them wouldn't work well um didn't they do that though in voyager track yards uh i, I seem to remember them beaming a torpedo onto a borg ship in and then having it detonate however that was of course much later technology and we've never seen anything like that in the original series uh, Mr. Miles is asking for a wrench. All right, Mr. Miles, in that case, you know what that means. That means I got to give you just a little something just for you. Oops, wrong button. Only Star Wars fans would be able to rationalize something called a turbo laser isn't a laser. Well... Uh, I, I, I think that it's, uh, here's the thing. While I would on the surface agree with you on that, however, just like people argue about how phasers and photon torpedoes work and stuff, uh, and stuff that isn't necessarily an alpha cannon, I'm going to give that to them. Because, let's be real, if turbo lasers were just lasers, well, then they're the most bizarre physics-breaking lasers in the history of history. 
because a laser would have a lot longer effective range than turbo lasers do and lasers would also not consume ammunition in the way that turbo lasers do which we have seen on screen especially you know think of uh, revenge of the sith um so the um it's it's unfair to say that that's a laser because it doesn't what's the difference between a disruptor and a phaser that's a good question mercer because I mean, phasers are a particle weapon. As far as I know, most now I'm not talking about ship-mounted weapons. And and uh, Captain uh, Captain Foley, please correct me if you think I'm off base here. But my understanding, it's funny because oh, I don't have it in reach right now. I actually have a replica phaser and a repli replica disruptor. As far as the hand weapons are concerned. Uh, a phaser is a particle weapon where a disruptor, my understanding is, is a sonic weapon. And so the way that it works is you use a tightly focused sound waves to disrupt the molecular structure of whatever it hits. And that's why commonly in the, uh, especially in the original series, while phasers you would see a beam, a disruptor you would see nothing except for the person getting hit. And so... Uh, so that's my understanding as far as handheld weapons. When they're talking ship-mounted weapons, no idea, because obviously a sonic disruptor would not work in space. We know that the in the original series, Romulans used plasma-based weapons, but Klingon disruptors, they're, uh, they, there's no, as far as I know, no canonical explanation as to what they are as far as the ship-mounted weapons. However, the disruptors that they carry around as soldiers, my understanding, are, are sonic-based weapons. Um, and so, Sci-Fi Sith says, it's the name only, they both really are phasers. I have heard that, you know, as far as the shipboard technology, that you're right. However, I would argue that the handheld weapons, no, they're not the same. Otherwise, they would have the same effects. Andy Checker, we enjoyed your last review on the Borg in the episode Scorpion. How much controversy was there behind the scenes in bringing over the sexualized Seven of Nine to Voyager? Um, honestly, not, I don't think it was as big a deal as some people make it out to be um, on both sides. I mean, it was pretty obvious what they were trying to do. They were trying to get ratings by putting a really super hot character on there. Um Maybe they use sound waves to heat the plasma. <laughs> um, and for the most part, the reception of Seven of Nine spoke for itself. Most people liked her character. And I actually like her character a lot, too. Not particularly in, in Scorpion Part 2, though. I don't like her until after that. And I think that it's because when she's trying to be intimidating Borg, it doesn't work. Um, and so... You know, uh, Kate Mulgrew hated Jerry Ryan. I heard that. I, you know, if that's true, well, that's their pettiness. I, I, you know, just like I know that George Takei hated William Shatner, but, you know, that's neither here nor there as far as I'm concerned. What I care about is, and, and I know this sounds stupid, but I don't really care that much about the behind the scenes drama with stuff like this. I don't care about the fact that several cast members hated Shatner. I don't care about the fact that people thought Shatner was a diva. What I care about is the character of James T. Kirk, the character of uh, Haraku, Her Haraku? Uh, Haraku, man, I can't pronounce anything, Sulu, uh, Chekhov, etc. Um, and so explain why the uh, every Borg ship can't create the queen whenever they want. Uh, explain why they can't, uh, because there's one queen. Okay. Uh, and actually, that's something, Trek cards, we still need to work out a date when we're going to be uh, hanging out here, because I'm definitely looking forward to that. And uh, I, I understand, you know, I want to talk about how the Borg are the most inconsistent villain in the history of Trek, and why... I think they're just horribly done uh, as far as... And I don't think there's a single... really. Actually, the I'll take that back. The only consistent uh, Borg stories in which there's two Borg stories that are consistent with each other is Best of Both Worlds and Scorpion. I would dare say that there's no other Borg sc story that is consistent with any other Borg story. 
Hate is a strong word, but you must hate. Let the hate flow through you. We will do that maybe next week. Hey, you know, let me know, man. Um, I will absolutely, uh, even though I hate to give up my live streams because I'm a greedy bastard, but I will be more than happy to come on your onto your show uh, anytime that I am available. So, uh, absolutely. Uh, Kate, um, refist to play any sexual type role. So they brought in Seven and she was pissy about it. Well, and the thing is, Seven didn't need to be overtly sexualized. I think that that was a bit much. Uh, I think that the cat suit was a bit much. And I also, as I mentioned in the video, I thought that the way they introduced her was a bit much. Um, because I, I don't necessarily think that that was necessary. I thought Seven was an interesting character without having to uh, show off her body at every given moment. We'll film it and edit it and release it later. Don't uh, we, You won't miss any live streams. Fair enough. And I, I didn't know how you wanted to do it, man. I, and I know that... Um, and I, I don't know if you do live, like when you had Laura on, if they were all live streams or you recorded them or whatever. Without Seven's boobs, Voyager would have been canceled. Um, not necessarily. And, uh, I mean, uh, well, what should have Seven worn if not a cat suit? Uh, well, technically speaking, um, I don't know, but I, I just think that the cat suit was a bit much. And let me, let me show you something though. Let me, uh, see if I can find it here. I had it on, I was looking at... Where is it? So, yeah, this one. And okay, so if we, I'm gonna bring this web page up on the screen just a minute and give me just. Uh, but first, actually, since Thomas was kind enough to throw a buck ninety nine in the chat saying the board queen was hot. Wow, Thomas. Hey, you know what's interesting is you say the board queen is hot and then you request this as as a super chat reward. <laughs> Hey, you want to learn about Jesus? There's no such thing as hooker client confidentiality. And I'm so sorry to expose your daughter to lore reloaded and drag. <laughs> but, uh, she'll, she's probably uh, splashing bleach in her eyes right now. Um, and so Super Chat has been closed to 50 characters. What do you mean, Don? They, 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 you mean that they, they've limited you to 50 characters on Super Chat now? I, um, hey, anti Jagger and Turdheads, good to see you, Mr. Captain. So, let's talk about the ratings on Voyager for just a second here. Um, I have a very interesting chart that I was actually looking at for some research for uh, some of the stuff that I've been talking about as far as uh, the shows. And here is a complete chart of all the ratings of all the episodes now you can see that right here the highest rated episode is blink of an eye um which uh was actually really really good uh then the second highest rating of of the series was scorpion one and two however if you look at the trajectory they plateaued in season four and that was the high point of the series as far as by a, by a full season. And so I dare say that Seven of Nine's boobs did not make a significant impact if you look at the overall ratings of the show. And so uh, e even though, yes, I know she's the hottest, you know, heck, I, I put on my video, I think she is the hottest female in all of Trek. But so... Andy Trucker, you and I should do a live together. It'll make for a good discussion or five. <laughs> I told you, Trek Yards, I, I, I'm more, me, more than happy to come on to your show uh, anytime that I'm available. And uh, Andy Trucker, the, uh, and, and so I, I, I mean that. Uh, the only problem is I'm horrible with freaking, uh, I, the, with uh, 
Twitter. I know that's how you like to communicate. I suck at Twitter. The only thing I'm any good at as far as social media stuff is Discord. As far as when people send me a, a direct message on Discord, I'm good about it. But other than that, I am not. Um, Andy Tricker, the more you donate in PayPal, and then you said later, Super Chat, the bigger the message you can send. Two boxes limited, there's a short sentence. Yeah, I, I do know that, because I've, I've done that, too. I've Super Chatted people, and, you know, believe it or not, yes, I'm a cheap bastard, but I do actually Super Chat people every now and then. Um, and so, the Emperor is here, no more talking about, oh, did he, I didn't even see, did he come in here? Oh, yeah, Captain George is here. Okay, everybody stop talking about Captain George. Um... The, uh, how big is Unicron compared to the Death Star 2? I don't know. How big is Unicron? So, um, I mean, that's 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 a good question. Charlie says, what the F is Twitter? Yeah, that's kind of how I, that's how I am. You prefer Facebook? Oh, well, if you prefer Facebook, what... Uh, let me um, let's see I'm gonna I'll bring up Facebook right now and we'll and I'll friend you here in just a minute and what is your Facebook uh, captain or and if, oh wait you if you don't want to put it out there for everybody to see I understand unless I don't know if it's one that you use for trek yards or um, and so I don't want to <laughs> make you put that out there <laughs> Um. However, you can send me a Twitter and I'll see your Facebook <laughs> if you if you don't want to put it in the chat. Um, and then I will immediately uh, uh, send a friend request to you. Okay, just Stuart Foley. All right, and let's see. All right. And I see, wow, there's a, there's a bunch of Stuart Foley's, but I assume you're the one that it says Captain Foley in parentheses. So, and let's see. And by the way, I like the replica phaser in your picture there. All right, so I sent you a message there on uh, on Facebook. You should see it there, um, Captain. Uh, comic book crossover, Star Trek and the animated series, and the Transformers. Um, are you saying there is one or you want one? Uh, Klingon trimmed his beard. Yeah, I trimmed my beard a couple of weeks ago. I, I, it was getting a little weird. I know Axel Foley. Yes, Axel Foley is awesome. Uh, I noticed that two tubes were both Rogue was in both Rogue One and Solo. I did not notice that. Kyle says, "How's it going? Not too bad. Uh, dealing with a bad back, but other than that, I'm doing okay. I like the castle castle run scenes. I don't know. I, uh, I um, I I thought it was okay, but it was a little. I mean, there was nothing that I wasn't." Uh, surprising about it what program did i use for that picture by the way i use for the picture and for those of you that haven't seen it i'll bring it up one more time because i'm very proud of it i think it came out really really good uh so for this picture uh the ships were rendered out in blender uh, and this is actually the very first render I've ever done in Blender. I used to use Lightwave and Maya back in the day. So this is the first time I've ever tried to render in Blender. I don't even know how to tweak the render settings to make it look better yet. And then um, I composited it with, with the space background in Photoshop. Now, obviously, when I'm doing actual animations... I will be compositing it in After Effects because Photoshop, uh, After Effects is a lot better than Photoshop with moving graphics and stuff, but, um, and I'm better at After Effects than I am at Photoshop anyway. Um, how's the plaque coming along? Well, you can see it on the bottom of the screen right now. And so the, I'm hoping that by, when I get up tomorrow morning, I will have a plaque. Um, how do you know it's a replica phaser, not a real fully functional phaser? Because I have pulled the trigger on it, and it just makes a noise. Uh, the comic is coming out in the next month. Okay, well, I have, and now I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's right here. I did, I, I, I don't buy comic books anymore. I have not in a while, but I did buy one comic book 
This is the first comic book I bought in a very long time, and it'll probably be the last, but I had to get it because I'm so excited that they actually brought back the Fantastic Four. Uh, so, Fantastic Four number one, you know, uh, and I got that just because I'm glad that they're bringing him back, even though they suck. Um, the p top part is missing and the bridge is missing, but still pretty good. <sighs> picky, picky, picky. Um, did you build the models yourself? No, I did not. Uh, and while I have made 3D models... Uh, on that level in with Lightwave, I've never, I haven't quite mastered the Blender system. Blender system is totally different than Lightwave. Um, one of those models uh, actually came from another YouTuber who, I'm, my, his name escapes me now. Um, but and then uh, the other one um, is from a website called Trek Meshes. Um, and so Trackyard sent a message via Facebook, and yeah, I see it there. And I see there's an audio clip. Are you saying you want me to play the audio clip? Because I can play it right now, and, and everybody will hear it. So I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to embarrass you if you said something really, really bad. Like, hey, everybody, here's my home address. Um, Sue Storm, hom hottest female comic book character. She was. Uh, she was definitely a hottie back in the day. Uh, I, looking at, and, and I'll tell you, this is, I haven't read this yet. I just kind of skimmed through it. Um, but it's so, and I've heard, you know, I know the comic books have all, gone all SJW and stuff. And I don't know if I'll be able to get it to where you can see it. So uh, do it, play it. I care not. All right. So let's see. What did Captain Foley have to say? And then I'll talk about this stupid comic book here now you can hear me anti trekker it is i captain foley we can communicate now via facebook messenger <laughs> yeah i don't know that was creepy man that was genuinely creepy and i'm gonna have to i'm, I'm gonna have to use that audio on something <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was Oh, man. All right, so let me see. I have to minimize this screen so I can see what's on the camera and see if I can get it to, yeah. Oh, it looks like you can see it. So just looking, like, that's Johnny with these adoring fans. And I, you know, it's like, oh, look, we got to make everybody, like, fat and 75 piercings and everybody's a different ethnicity and stuff. And it's just like, okay. You know what? Comic books, when I was collecting, everybody looked like, you know, they were freaking hot. Now they try to make it, everybody looks like an SJW. And I just, ugh, whatever. Uh, John Byrne's Fantastic Four. John Byrne's Fantastic Four was awesome. In fact, almost everything John Byrne touched. His run on X-Men was awesome. His run on Fantastic Four was awesome. His Man of Steel was groundbreaking. Uh, and so, absolutely, John Byrne, I worship at the altar of John Byrne, as John Byrne from the 70s and 80s. Uh, he was absolutely awesome. Foley needs some, some meds. Yeah, I, I, Foley's making me a little nervous uh, with, with that. That was like one of the most disturbing things I think I've ever heard in my now life. Now you can hear me, anti Trekker. It is I, Captain Foley. We can... Although I'll, I'll say this, uh, Captain Foley, based on that clip alone, um, you should be playing the Joker. You should absolutely be playing the Joker rather than Joaquin Phoenix. Because that sounded like... <laughs> so, uh, what, what did you see? Let's see. Um, so Dr. Doom versus Batman intellect wise, that's an interesting one. Cause Dr. Doom is a brilliant physicist and a magician, almost on the level of Dr. Strange. Batman is a, uh, you know, a detective. He's got, he's very good at deductive reasoning, two different skill sets. But if I had to pick raw IQ, I would probably give it to Doom. 
Uh, Foley sounds like an Ed Wood character, like Chris Wells. <laughs> Chris Wells speaks, yes. Oh, man. Um, I, I think that, yeah, we just found... Uh, that's got to be a Super Chat reward eventually, Can I think. communicate now via Facebook Messenger. <laughs> wow, that's just... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Now you can hear me, anti Trekker. <laughs> Have you been drinking, Captain? <laughs> I, I, I gotta ask. I, is that like... <laughs> Do Foley Con. All right, so... Captain Foley, here's your challenge right now. If you can do this for me, I would love it because uh, if I, I know you don't come to all my live streams, but for some reason, everybody's obsessed with me doing the, the con speech where I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you and I wish to go on hurting you. I'm going to leave you as I, as uh, you left me, as you left her maroon for all eternity in the center of a bad, dead planet that buried alive, buried alive. So they make me say that in all sorts of different voices for some reason. Now, in that creepy voice you just did, I want you to give me that speech. And I know everybody will love it. And in fact, I, you know, I, I will probably have my son make it into an animation because it would be so epic to have the Captain Foley Khan speech. Um, so if you're willing, Captain Foley, send that to me on Facebook and I will play it for everybody to see. Uh, so <laughs> it rubs the lotion on its skin. Yes, uh, that's uh, <laughs> fully sounds uh, Enderman levels of creepy. Yeah, he really does. <laughs> um, lore con. I can't do lore reloaded. I've tried and I cannot do lore reloaded. Uh, if he were here though, I'd try, uh, I'd try to get him to do it. Uh, cause that would be awesome. I'm going to have a little bit more of this Romulan ale cause this stuff is really off the chain. Um, it was hard finding something that was the right kind of blue, but I think this looks really darn good. Mm. So Captain Foley is working on his con speech, so that's this is going to be interesting. Uh, we must think about the future for... That is... Uh, we must... The future... We must think about the future, for that is where we're going to spend the rest of of our lives. Let the guilty be punished. Let the innocent be rewarded. And now we will tell you what happened on that fateful day. For can your mind uh, comprehend the idea of grave robbers from outer space? I know I'm paraphrasing, but yeah, I love that. How about Yodacon? <laughs> Yodacon. Mmm! Kill you for worse I have done! Hurt you, I have. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, here we go. All right, guys. Brace yourselves for the most epic moment in the history of live streams. Right now, it's about to happen. In in all in all seriousness, um, oh. yeah, I'll do that. That'll be funny. Um, anyway, yeah, I'll do that. That sounds fun. And I want to see an animation of it. All right, you got it, Captain. You you do it. I will be. Listen, I, I, I can like hear this creepy son, bastard. If you've seen you've seen the animations, my son does. So as you as you wander about it. So wait, wait. Which speech? Okay, so you can paraphrase it a little bit to fit you if you want to. But the speech is, I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you, and I wish to go on hurting you. I'm going to leave you like you left me, like you left her, marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead planet, buried alive, buried alive. And so, for example, one of my most popular ones uh, is Redneck Con, which is, y'all, I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you, and I wish to go on hurting you, so I'm going to leave you just like you left me, like you left my my girl there in the center of a dead planet, buried alive, <laughs> buried alive. So, um, so yeah, that's 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 one that I did. Uh, I I I, per I particularly like my Sling Blade con actually. Uh, if if you if you've seen Sling Blade, mm, I, I reckon I've done far worse than kill you. Mm, I've hurt you. Mm. I wish to go on hurting you. Hmm. Figure I'll leave you the way you left me. Hmm. The way you left her. Buried alive. Buried alive. Hmm. 
that's thank you thank you very much that's my epic um epic uh con <laughs> how about jesse ventura con <laughs> i can't jesse ventura Ooh, i've done five <laughs> that sounds more like yosemite sam <laughs> step into a slim gym and so another voice message this was only four seconds so i assume that's not it but let's see here Mm, I want me some of them French fried potatoes. Oh, not bad. Not bad, my friend. Mm, I want me some of them French fried potatoes. Mm, I figure I could go for some of that canned meat and biscuits and mustard. Mm. Um, I want to hear a girl quote con. Well, if, if maybe, and I don't know if Captain Foley's daughter is still with him, but maybe he could get her to do it. I don't know if she's a nerd or not, but. You know, that, that's about the closest. Uh, I, one of these days, I'm going to have to have Mrs. Antitrekker do it in her sexy voice. That would drive you guys crazy. I can't do Christopher Walken. I would love to be able to do a great Christopher Walken con, but I just, hmm, I, I've done far worse than kill you. Hmm, I've, I've hurt you. It's, I, can't, I can't do a decent Christopher Walken. I wish I could, because I love Christopher Walken's voice. Foley Sling Blade with lore animation. <laughs> She went to bed. Oh, well. You Canadians in your early bedtimes. Um, <laughs> probably asking for Asian con. So here's the joke behind that, uh, Captain, is that for some reason, Mr. Miles wants me to do Asian con. And I kept saying, no, I'm not going to do Asian con because that's like borderline racist. And so <laughs> I'm not gonna... um, We need to get Palpatine to do those lines. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, let's see. Um, but yeah, that I, I have to, by the way, captain, I have to remember, I haven't used that particular program in a very long time, but I mean, I know how to use it. I just never do. <laughs> so <laughs> I need to, I need to do that. Seth Rogen con. Well, you guys say I sound like Seth Rogen anyway. So, you know, it's just con, but s while smoking a doobie, I guess. Hannibal Lecter con, con. I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you, but I'd rather eat you. Oh. <laughs> Ronald Reagan. Oh, I could actually do a Ronald Reagan. All right. <clears throat> I haven't done Reagan in a while. Well, uh, well, I've I've done far worse than than kill you. Well, I've hurt you, and I wish to go on hurting you. I'm going to leave you like you left me, like you left Nancy, marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead planet. Buried alive, yeah, buried alive. Um, Kermit the Con. <laughs> Hi-ho, I've done far worse than kill you. Uh, can't really do a good Kermit. I, that sounds more like Marvin than Kermit. Um... You guys are keep, keep trying to make me do it, but I, I, I can't. <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch gone. Well, we've seen that one. Uh, we are not in the past or present anymore. This is the future. Yes, it is. Um, well, today is yesterday's future, but tomorrow is today's future. Thank you, Xavier. You like my Ronald Reagan? Thank you. Thank you. I, I used to do Ronald Reagan all the time back when he was freaking president, but, you know. Um, Yes, I, I'm. I, when I went into the army, Ronald Reagan was pre president. That's that's how old I. Tazcon. <laughs> that's about all he ever says. Um. That last bit was <laughs> the electric was chilling with the electric con. Yeah. <laughs> Andy Trekker live stream has turned into hours of impersonations. Yeah, I. But I'm not even a good. I can't do good impersonations. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger Khan. I've done Thawus than hurt you. I, I, <laughs> I can't do Bugs or Daffy. I suck at those. And you forgot the commies. Well, them commies. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, the only Looney Tunes character I'm any good at is Marvin the Martian, honestly. Uh, I don't know why that is, but that's the only one I can do. Uh, 
Reagan was present when I was. Thanks so much. Rocky Con. Well, I I've done far worse. I figure I, you know, I, I've done far worse and kill you, and you would. I've hurt you. Yo, Adrian, I, I didn't want to go on hurting you. I left you leave you, you know. <laughs> Rocky, that, that, that's of course classic Rocky one. Rocky as opposed to later on. Dalek Con. I can't. <laughs> I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you, and I wish to go on hurting you. Sounds better if I have the voice modulator. Um, crazy old ma man con. Well, you hear that every time I open my mouth. Um, <laughs> Remember when I said I would kill you last? I lied. Uh, Chewy con. <laughs> R2D2 con. What, what, what am I supposed to do? Just beep? Um... Um, Snake Pliskin. Uh, I can't do Snake Pliskin. Man, Snake Pliskin is a tough one. Uh, I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you. Is that, um, Trump con? I can't do Trump. Um, well, well, if it isn't the straw man trekker. Oh, Waspinator's hurt because I, I called him out on his uh, calling the prequels post 911 uh inspired movies when the first film was 2 years before 911 and the second film was 7 months after 911 so neither of those films had anything to do with 911 that's not a straw man waspinator it's fact ASL con ASL I'm not sure what you mean Skeletor con <laughs> <laughs> I've done far worse than kill you, He-Man. I've hurt you. <laughs> um, R2-D2 has a filthy mouth. That's true. Um, so, let's see. Uh, Burnham Con. Uh, no, I'm not doing current. Uh, Jay, how can I... Um, <laughs> I can't block my boss from watch. No, but I've been... You see, here's the thing. This is the only reason I'm able to sit up right now. Um, Jack Sparrow Con. I can't really do Jack Sparrow. Um, well, you know, I've done... Yeah, see, I can't, yeah, I can't do, do uh, Jack Sparrow. Yeah, it was Revenge of the Sith that folks uh, mean when it comes to that. Oh, okay, so you said the prequels, plural, but you really just meant Revenge of the Sith was about 9-11 and George Bush. Because, yeah, Revenge of the Sith was all about 9-11 and George Bush. Whatever. Um, I know a lot of people try to say that the prequels were about the evils of Republicans because uh, George Lucas is a liberal and he hated Republicans and, you know, his simplistic idea of politics. That's the best he could do. Uh, only problem with your prequel 9-11 theories, episode 1 came out in 99. Yeah, exactly, Mr. Gapton. That's uh, that's what I said in, in the comments. That's why he says I'm straw manning him, because he really only... I'm supposed to read his mind and know he really only met, meant uh, the the Revenge of the Sith. Even though... what Are you trying to say Order 66 was an allegory for 9-11? Because that makes no freaking sense. Uh, what Romulan nail in the real world? What's Rom oh, Romulan ale in the real world? Well, that depends on what you mix. In my particular case, it is a mixture of vodka and uh, um, sugar-free blueberry, and it's pretty darn good. Or not blueberry, but uh, blue raspberry. I'm going to have a little bit more because this is medicinal today. And it's funny because, you know, that's... Dr. McCoy only gets it for medicinal reasons. Now, I've made it before I was on the, my current diet. I've made it using, I can never pronounce it right, it's like blue caco, um, and, which is really good, but it's got sugar in it, so I, and I don't get to have sugar anymore. You don't remember Bush ended the Republic and declared him emperor? Yeah, I forgot about that. Um... I, yeah, I think the only thing episode three took from 9-11 was if you're not with me, you're my enemy line. I, I tend to agree. Uh, I, I do. I think that um, that is the only thing that was any kind of direct thing. Uh, what's wrong with you? Uh, my back is out. 
and so I've been basically in pain all day, but it, I, I'll live. Looks like blue Gatorade, like the water in the Bahamas. Well, it's not Gatorade, I'll tell you. Um, here's the primary ingredient right here. Um, post 9-11 covers a good decade worth of events. There wasn't a decade between the release of the, of the movie of, of Revenge of the Sith and 9-11. Revenge of the Sith didn't come out in 2011. So no, it's not a decade. Waspinator, focus. Um, I've seen that Romeo Nail. I don't know if it's any good or not. Uh, let's get anti trekker hammered. Well, you're going to have to do better than one person putting a super chat in to get me hammered. Um, but I will tell you, any super chat's over five bucks and I'm having a drink because that's... Yeah. Is Captain Foley still trying to do con or did he go to bed? Uh, I don't know. Is Captain Foley still here? He said he's going to do it. I don't know if he's going to do it tonight or if he's going to do it later and he he needs to warm himself up and because, uh, you know, practice for, for his con debut. Because, um, you know, Captain Foley is a, is a method actor and everything. So... And... So Captain Foley said, I'm still here through Facebook. If you heard that ding, that was Captain Foley. Uh, so Captain Foley is, in fact, still with us. Um, <laughs> I said I've listened to so many, now I can't do it. <laughs> oh, man. Fantasy Island's tattoo as con. Boss. Boss, I've done far worse than kill you. <laughs> oh, man. I, yeah. Uh, Revenge of the Sith came out in 2005. Yeah, so you had four years. So that's not a decade. I, I, it, maybe, maybe you're a little confused, Waspinator, but yeah. A decade is 10 years. So you had four tenths of a decade. Um, Andy Trekker, I, I, uh, I guess you're not working too early tomorrow, all that back pain medicine. Uh, no, I, I fortunately don't work super early in the morning. Uh, so yeah, but Oxmix is con Bella Oxmix. I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you. Now send me some of them heaters or I'm going to go on hurting you. <laughs> Captain Foley's milkshake brings all the nerds to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Clink as Khan or Sergeant Schultz. I can't, Colonel Clink can't really do it, but Sergeant Schultz, I see nothing. That was such a horrible show. Um, Igor as Khan. I've done far worse than kill you. <laughs> Sanford and Sudka. Oh, this is the big one. <laughs> I've done far worse than kill you, and I'm coming. <laughs> oh, man. Revenge of the Sith was the best of the prequels, and I personally favorite of the prequels. How um, how you, which Star Wars prequel is your favorite? Um, I assume you, which, which Star Wars prequel is my favorite? This is going to sound like absolute blasphemy, for, but, uh, I, but I have to be honest here. The Phantom Menace. And the reason The Phantom Menace, obviously I hated Jar Jar Binks. That was the worst part of that film. But I got to go to the world premiere of The Phantom Menace. And so that was an incredible experience for me and Mrs. Anti Trekker. And, you know, I, I never got to go to an event like that before or since. And so that's, yeah. So just because of that experience. Um, the Godzilla as Khan. How's that, how's that even a thing? Uh, Starscream is con. I've done far worse than kill. That sounds more like Cobra Commander. Um, Roscoe P. Coltrane. Roscoe P. Coltrane. As <laughs> I think Lucas wrote the prequels a long time before 9-11. Yes, he did. But, you know, Waspinator doesn't, doesn't understand that. Try to imagine life. Uh, try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously, and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Yes, Egon, 
That is, so, so that's bad. Okay. Uh, I'm not confused, just amused that I'm having to defend something I said in an, in an adium of sorts. Rome with overtones of post-9-11. By post, think less 9-11 and more war in Iraq. Waspinator. The war in Iraq had not started. Um, throat cancer, Pat Bancon. I've done far worse than kill you. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's about all I can do. Um, Phantom Menace is so underrated. All right, well, here's the thing. I know the thing is, is that the Phantom Menace has the big glaring canker sore of Jar Jar Binks, and I totally understand that. But uh, if you take Jar Jar Binks, and in fact, if you've seen the anti-cheese edition that you can download, um, it's actually not bad. Uh, if, if you if you take out 90% of Jar Jar, it's actually really good. Um, and Episode 1 had the best, as far as choreography, Episode 1 had the best lightsaber duel in the entire franchise, in my humble opinion. Uh, Starscream and Cobra Commander had the same voice actor. Well, that's obvious. <laughs> yes. Uh, and Iron Wolf and Waspinator both said that at the same time, so now that means that you guys are jinxed each other, I guess. Can you do a Doctor Strange love impression? I cannot. Uh, because I can't even... I even though I saw that movie was so long ago, I don't even remember what he sounds like. Last Jedi Luke Khan. I just threw up in my mouth. <laughs> Clint Eastwood is Khan. Well, Clint Eastwood is Khan is almost the same now as, as Throat Cancer Batman. I mean, if you've seen him in his later movies, like, I've done far with... Do you feel lucky? Yeah, I don't know. That, that's... <laughs> Al Pacino from Glen Gary Glen Ross Con. Man, now you're getting awfully specific. SpongeBob. I can't do. <laughs> See, I can't do a SpongeBob. Yeah, yeah, I can't. Cisco's Con. I. Can't. I've done. I see. I can't. You guys are asking me to do these voices that I can't do. Jar Jar is Con. <laughs> Misa, so glad that I did far worse than kill you. Misa hurt you. Which sounds an awful lot like Elmo Con. So, <laughs> wow, <laughs> what is with you guys and freaking Con? I don't understand what your obsession is with the all the different variants of Con. Um, they should have had him make one, um, one, uh, one bet when he first arrived when he detected the kid had the force and saved us twenty minutes. Yeah. Nicholas Cage con. That's it. Uh, Mickey Mouse is con. <laughs> I've done far worse than kill you. <laughs> I've hurt you. And I wish to go on hurting you. Smeagol con. <laughs> <sighs> My precious. I've done far worse. See, I can't do a good Smeagol. I watched the film for a short... Uh, Film. I, I watched them film a shot for Magnum P.I. Photo Helos and the P.I. Little Bird is Gray going slower than they could fly. No idea what you're talking about except that I got that you watched them film a shot for Magnum P.I. Um, which I don't care about Magnum P.I. Not that I don't care about you, Jay. I don't care about Magnum P.I. Uh, Chris Elliott says Low Reloaded is con. I, I can't do Low Reloaded. I wish I really could, but I can't. Uh, um... For some reason, I like making Elmo say very psycho psychopathic things because you're a sick person, Darth Vader. Um, anti Checker, Mr. Fantastic versus Batman intelligence wise. I think that's a no brainer. <laughs> that's a bad pun. Uh, Mr. Fantastic is, as far as raw intellect, uh, no human can really match him. He is the smartest human being in the Marvel Universe. At least he was last time I was reading comics. I'm sure now it's like some 12-year-old girl. But, um, you know, that's... Yeah. Pee Wee Herman is Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> oh boy, I have him over. <laughs> and, and I ate him with some fava beans. <laughs> Snake Eyes is con. Okay, Snake Eyes is con. Here it comes. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, 
ultimately, the 9-11 thing is a distraction. Nothing you said refutes my point that the prequels were not based on the monomyth like the classic trilogy had been. End of story. Effing nitpickers. First of all, I never said that the prequels were based on the monomyth. So now who's straw manning? Right? I'm simply saying that your assertion that the prequels had anything to do with post-9-11 are a load of crap. The only thing post-9-11 in the prequels is that one line from the third movie. That's it. Uh, Elvis is gone. Well, I've done far worse. Than I can't. <laughs> I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you. And I wish to go on hurting. You see, that's that now. Darth Maul has gone. <laughs> At last, I've done far worse than kill you. At last, I have hurt you. Ricardo Montalban Khan. What? That that makes no sense. Hans Gruber Khan. I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you. And now I have a machine gun. One of these days, Andy Checker will get you to do Asian Con. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I'll tell you what, I will do Asian Con once I have 100,000 subscribers, if you remind me, Josh. Do Anti Trekker Con. Well, Anti Trekker Con will be, hey, you know. Hey guys, Michael J. Crawford, the Anti Trekker here. And last time on the Anti Trekker, I did far worse than kill you. I hurt you. And today, I wish to go on hurting you. So I'm going to leave you the same way you left me and you left Mrs. Antitrekker, marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead planet, buried alive, buried a... There you go. That's the Antitrekker cod. Uh, my Mickey Mouse sounded like lore. <laughs> I watch the TNG peak performance once uh, once a week. It keeps getting better every single, single time I watch it. Darren, you worry me. Um, which do you think is better? Con, which, was, which do you think is a better con quote? The one uh, where he's been, with, we've been doing, or the one he does when, as Kirk is about to kill him? I actually really like the, yeah, the game's not over. To the last, I will grapple with thee. For hate's sake, I spit my last breath. Although that's taken directly from Moby Dick. Um, gosh, that mall was terrible, anti trucker You know what, Captain George? I never claimed to be able to do imitations, but yet you guys are, you know, making me do it. Cobra Commander is con. I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you. <laughs> Why are you so grumpy all the time? Well, maybe because my back is always hurt. Don't a hundred do a hundred thousand bots count? Uh, only if they watch my videos. <laughs> um, we need an animation called the Council of Cons. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm going to have to do that, and, I'm, and I will include uh, Captain Foley in that. I think that that will actually that will have to be the next mega chat. Will be the Council of Cons. Uh, and and we'll have to have you. You will have to do uh, Palpatine for that. Um, I do like the Zindi attack on the Enterprise, which is indirectly inspired by 9-11. Well, that, I, th I would agree. I think that the Zindi attack was inspired by 9-11. Uh, the anti Con uh, did forget to remind us to like and subscribe. Well, that's because that's, you know, at the end of the movie. <laughs> so, and, you know, before I continue to hurt you, I want to thank my latest patron supporter. <laughs> as a he does lore reload it and says, Mrs. anti <laughs> <laughs> John Locke from Lost. I never watched Lost. And I know some people love it, some people hate it, but I've never watched it. Uh, because at the time, I was working nights. Isn't that more of a quote from Moby Dick? It absolutely is. And, and it was taken, uh, you know, uh, Khan quoted Moby Dick quite a bit in Star Trek II. And Trekkers Khan would be more like, I don't want to ban Miles, I want to hurt him. <laughs> and then he plays the old number four. Mr. Miles. First of all, Mr. Miles, thank you so much for joining the live stream. I truly do appreciate it. I really do appreciate the support you give this channel. And I, you know, I'm glad I didn't kill you. I would much rather hurt you. And I wish to go on hurting you. B. 
Beetlejuice Con. Well, you know, I've got, I've done far worse than her. I've killed you. Um, I, yeah, that's about the best I can do. Mrs. Anti Trekker is con. I can't. I'm not going to insult you guys by doing Mrs. Anti Trekker. Big Black Con. Wow, Waspinator. Wow, that's just yeah. Uh oh, and so let's see. What did it looks like? I got so I I got breaking news. We got something here from Captain Foley here, uh, who is like. He's avoiding the chat, but he's but he's he's hitting me up on Facebook. So let's see here. He says he's done like six of them, but uh, I see I only see one that he sent so far. So okay, you guys, you ready for this? Oh, I've done far worse than kill you, anti trekker <laughs> I've hurt you, and I wish to go on hurting you. I shall leave you. As you left me, as you left the commander, marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead YouTube channel, buried in comments, buried in comments. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. I'll, uh... <laughs> So there you go, guys. Captain Foley can actually be funny. Now, you saw it here first because you've certainly never seen it on Trek Yards, but here he's actually funny. So, so congratulations, Captain Foley, for the first time in history. You were genuinely funny. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. You're not funny. Um... <laughs> so play it again says mr Ka no no you see now that's gonna be it will be a super chat reward but so if you want me to play it again it's gonna be a super chat reward now because i'm gonna make money off of captain foley that's that's my goal uh and yeah and and yes absolutely we're gonna do an animation of that i'm gonna uh, as soon as i figure out how to download the audio from facebook which i've never done there's got to be a way to do it here. Let's see. Delete, react. How do we do that? I know I can capture it using my streaming software after the show. Um, we, we can have you as Turd Kirk. Yeah. <laughs> Foley! <laughs> so anyway, I got to channel my inner Steve Irwin today and saved a snake at work that everyone else was too chicken to deal with. Well, that's good, I guess. Um, Captain Foley utilizes the data, uh, the data technique when it comes to humor, <laughs> where he just doesn't get it. <laughs> no, I, I Foley, I'll, I'll capture it using the streaming software I have can capture the audio off my computer. So I'll do that after the stream's over. Um, and so Ricky throws two bucks in the chat, says, I believe in Foley. I was Trek Yard's first super chat. There you go. So... Thank you so much, Captain Foley. You have now given me two bucks. Oh, I've done far worse than kill you, Anti-Trekker. I've hurt you. And I wish to go on hurting you. I shall leave you as you left me, as you left the commander, marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead YouTube channel, buried in comments. Buried in comments. <laughs> awesome. And so, uh, and I, I got to say though, Trekyards, um, you you sound an awful lot like Mark Hamill there. It wouldn't take much for you to do the Mark Hamill Joker, I think. Um. Foley con is the best con. Yeah, I, I think that, that Captain Foley is now officially the best con. Um, <laughs> to go. Still, old friend. Oh, sure, you have 40,000 subscribers, but like a poor marksman, you keep screwing up your videos. <laughs> Oh, uh, now we need to get cocky to say something. 
Uh, that Captain George tried to plug himself somewhere, says I could do the Joker anti-tracker. Oh, wait, wait, I, I did say, even though it's only a $2 super chat, I'm going to have a little bit more of this Romulan ale for medicinal purposes only. Um, ah, yes. Uh, should I, yeah, you can go ahead and send them to me, Trek Yards. I'll check them all out. Um, I keep calling you Trek Yards because that's what pops up on the screen, but Captain. Um, you should have a channel that just has your name on it because Trek Yards is like we think of, well, of course, granted, if, if you, if you're on as Trek Yards and then I can brag that Trek Yards hangs out with me, but you know. Uh, whoever suggested Shatner Khan was on us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, man. I think we need to get Cockings to do something for the Empire since he's already got the accent. Um, let's see. He uh, George, I'm not sure what you're talking about there. Let's see. Have you finished the Spider-Man game? Yes, Thomas Potts, 100%. And then he does anti-trigger. It'll be hard to beat the one you sent. Yeah, th that's true. Are you getting yourself hammered on the blue swill? No, not quite hammered yet. I need a few more super chats to get hammered. That uh, I don't think that you... <laughs> it's going to be that much. Oh, so let's see. It looks like Captain Foley sent another version here. So let's see. Oh, the couple of them here. All right, let's see. Oh, I've done far worse than kill you, Anti-Checker. I've hurt you. And I wish to go on hurting you. I shall leave you as you left me. As you left the Commander. Marooned for all eternity. In the center of a dead YouTube channel. Buried in comments. Buried in comments. <laughs> Man, I did like three second one. What's that? Remind me that Christian's an idiot. Remind me that Christian's an idiot. All right, Christian's an idiot. I don't know who Christian is, but Christian's an idiot. Um. So let's see. Too many captains this morning. Yeah, we do have a lot of captains around here. Johnny Bravo Con. Oh, I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you. Pretty mama. Uh, and so is Enderman. Enderman is do is do, of doom is here. And Enderman, wait a minute, get the brain probe ready because. <laughs> and of course Captain George is plugging uh, uh, Captain Foley's channel which I didn't even realize you had your own channel outside of Trek Yards so that's cool um, but I mean what's the point I mean you got 8 billion subscribers on Trek Yards um, all right, now you're on your Captain Foley account. <laughs> now I have to ask Captain George, so does that mean I should make Captain Foley's personal account a wrench as well? And Junius, a.k.a. T. Stoney, throws a dollar into the chat. Thank you so much, my friend. And so don't forget to pick a super chat there, uh, T, if you so choose. Uh uh, yes, this captain does not have a special intro. Well, sorry, I'm working on it. Boy, subscribe to me. First of all, Captain Foley, if you need subscribers, how about you just plug yourself on your on the uh, Truck Yards channel where you have like 8 billion subscribers? Give me a number 15. All right. you got, And a Baba Booey con? I don't know. What's Baba Booey? I don't even know that one. You guys are coming up with some weird stuff today. Hey, you want to learn about Jesus? There's no such thing as hooker client confidentiality. You know, important life lesson there that we need to know. Um, 
Where did you get the Enderman thing? Well, Enderman used to be on the streams all the time, and he is absolutely insane. And so that's that's why we do that. Um, how long will the stream go on? I don't know exactly, Enderman, but a little bit longer. Who would win in a fight, Hulk or Superman? Hulk is stronger technically because Hulk has no upper limit to his strength. However, Superman can hit Hulk from a distance. Hulk cannot hit Superman from a distance. Hulk cannot fly. Uh, I think ultimately that Hulk would go down. And do it, says uh, Captain George. All right, in that case, let me back up here. All right. There you go, Captain Foley. Uh, ben Kingsley is Gandhi Khan. I, I, I don't know. I can't really do I, I haven't seen that movie in freaking 20 years. Uh, there are too many captains. I want to be a transporter chief. Well, change your username to transporter chief Darren. Crowbars are better than wrenches, in my opinion. Well, especially if you're fighting alien zombie monsters. That's absolutely true. If I get a successful YouTube, can I get a wrench? You'll still have to go through Captain George. But if it's up to me, the answer would be no. Bob Roscon. Well, now, I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you. And aren't you happy that I've hurt you? And I'm going to go on hurting you with some happy clouds and fuzzy bunnies. And I'm going to leave you stranded for all eternity in the center of a dead planet, buried alive. Buried alive. <laughs> so Thomas says, Captain George is awesome, and he needs an intro. Yeah, like because I have nothing but time to make intros. But I, I'll probably have to do something because he is freaking Trek Yards after all. <laughs> Hundred squirrels versus a thousand chipmunks. Who who you have? I would have to say a thousand chipmunks versus a hundred squirrels. That's a ten to one advantage. I would have to give it to the chipmunks because while squirrels are larger than chipmunks, a ten to one. I don't think you could overcome that. Spirit Sire, you, uh, you look like you need sleep badly. <laughs> you okay? Uh, it's not sleep. I'm, I'm hurting, but uh, it's not. I'm okay as far as sleep is concerned. Um, although, I'm probably not going to get a video out tomorrow, to be honest with you guys, because, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be tired. Uh, and where did you get the sound for Enderman? Um, a few sources, actually. Uh, the actual voice that goes Enderman, Enderman, Enderman of Doom is me modulated in several different ways at the same time. The laughing I got off of a stock sound website. Um, Captain George's intro should be him using the Palpatine voice So Welcome, young anti-trekker. I've been expecting you. <laughs> Lore is indeed a brave man. Uh, yes, because I would not put on a dress and walk up and down the street like that. Uh, I would rather be a chief engineer deep in some warp core. Um, okay. Um, Troy Letta says, I'm a girl, gib wrench. Uh, well, first of all, in order to get a wrench, you have to go through, um, Captain George. He is the sole giver of wrenches. That didn't sound right. Michael Buffercon? I don't, I don't know who Michael Buffer is off the top of my head. Mr. Miles, you have a Ryan butthole. He does. Uh, yeah, you look kind of haggard there, anti Trek. Are you okay? I am. Well, I know my hair is kind of a mess because I've been, yeah, I've, I've just been hurting. Uh, my back is uh, not doing real good. The only reason I'm able to sit up right now is the Romulan ale. Um, Antrek, can I get my own theme song? I will think about that one, Mr. Miles. I've got a few people that I need to do. I already promised uh, Acid that I would do one for him. Uh, I do need to do one for Captain George, and I do need to do one for Trek Yards. But, Mr. Miles, if you remind me, after I get those caught up, I will get one for you, too. Yard Sale versus Garage Sale. Well, I would have to give that to Yard Sale because you can fit anything in your yard, assuming that you have an actual yard. Squirrels probably got more nuts than chipmunks. That's true. USS Enterprise versus ISS Enterprise. Well, they are, as far as, forget about the crew, they are identical. And so it would just, whoever shoots first. Mecha Random versus Mikey Spock. 
Well, as much as I love Mecha Random and she's a great friend of the channel, I would have to give it to Mikey Spock because I already said the the only uh, if if Mikey Spock fights Ray, then the universe explodes, and uh, the only two people that can beat Mikey Spock are Mrs. Anti Trekker and Jesus. Um, do I like Star Trek? Yes. Couch or Chesterfield? Couch. Only men get wrenches. That's not true, Spirit Fire, because uh, there are a couple of women that have wrenches. Uh, Muhammad Ali Khan. Oh, I've done far worse than kill you. I, I can't do Muhammad Ali. Uh, who did Lore go on a date with? I have no idea. Uh, if he actually did go on a date, or if he was just like, when he says date, he means internet time. I don't know. Um... You need a turd off versus bar frog super chat. <laughs> okay. How's the third print going? Uh, oh, well, I guess uh, I should have switched the screens because you can't see. So it's going like about there. Um, Trek rules, war drools. War is drools. Um, I would say this. I am, I'm a fan of both franchises. I truly love Star Trek and Star Wars. However, Star Trek is always my first love. So... I, I, you know, if you had to pick one, I would agree with you. Do you think Rednick likes it in a Jeffrey's tube? Don't know. You'd probably have to ask him. Optimus Prime Con. You know, it's funny you should say that, Stuart. I actually just did an Optimus Prime, although I shouldn't say this, but you guys will find out anyway. The next super chat that's coming out will feature Optimus Prime, but um, and, and but without the voice modulator, it's going to be hard to do it. But. I've done. You see, I can't, I can't. Let me. Let me see. Am I making me actually break out the effects here? So we need first of all. Hold on. Bear with me, guys. This is the exciting part. Where first we put the pitch shifter on, and. I've done far worse than hurt you. Uh, no, I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you. And I wish to go on hurting you. Computer to have two effects running at the same time. Alright. Um, Mary has a wrench. Yes, she does. And so does Mecha Random. Um... I don't know that the ISS Enterprise is identical to the USS Enterprise. It certainly wasn't true when it came to the NX-01 and the Mary counterpart. Well, the NX class is different, but as far as the uh, the Constitution class, there was no discernible difference, except that, like, you know, things were occasionally misplaced, but they weren't, but everything worked exactly the same. Like, Scotty could deal with the engines on the ISS just as easily as the, as the USS. You shall not pass gas. <laughs> yep. Lore Reloaded proposed to Becca Random. That is true. Drunk yoga sounds dangerous. It does. Who is Mary? Mary is a regular that comes on here. She's not here today. Uh, she, she usually shows up in the afternoon live streams. And she is going through, um, I can't remember if it's both chemo and radiation therapy. And so she's having a rough time right now. But it's always nice when she's here. Um... I know how to do Optimus, kinda. Okay. <laughs> the trick is uh, trick to doing Optimus Prime is to just do John Wayne in a deeper voice. Well, I've done far. I, I can't do John Wayne. Futurama Zap Brannigan versus Commodore Matt Decker. Wow, wow! Now that would be a contest of champions right there. But the Zapster would win. Um. Dr. Zayas Khan? Who, who's Dr. Zayas? And Adam West Khan. I can't, see, I can't imitate either one of those guys. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. L LMAO, I've done far worse than hurt you. I've killed you. Yeah, I know. That's, that's, I do that all the time. I, just, I think it's part of my dyslexia. Uh, the ISS Enterprise wasn't identical. It had Agony Booth and a Disintegrator Weapon and Mirror Unit. Well, that's true. It did have the, the Tantalus Field and the Agony Booth. Uh, however, 
as far as the ship itself, uh, I think it was the same. Um, wait, who's going through chemo? Uh, that would be Mary. Uh, but she's not here right now. You're doing an Optimus Prime related super chat. I well, I, you see, I hate to spoil anything, but I will tell you that Optimus Prime, Cobra Commander, uh, and uh, Megatron, and Snake Eyes, and uh, General Flag all appear in this particular super chat. It was actually uh, for for one of my uh, one one of my supporters that uh, has been bribe me an absorbent amount of money um if you have believe pray for mary absolutely derek uh i i and i i pass that on uh jesse ventura con i can't do a decent jeff jesse ventura although i do think it's funny the predator featured two future governors season two episode 21 kirk looked really sexy in his uniform no lie um well, now, now you're going to make me look it up because I, well, I know that's hurting my Trek cred, but I don't know the episodes by number. Uh, so let's see. TOS season two, episode 21, huh? Um, oh, patterns of force. So you liked them in the Nazi get up, huh? Wow. That's, that's kind of disturbing. Uh, more powerful rings, Captain Planet, or Thanos? Thanos. Um, especially if you have all six of the Infinity Gems, you are unstoppable. Uh, the Mirror Universe Enterprise was older. It was uh, the Cage-style ship, so possibly older weapons. Interesting point. Um, and I didn't really think about that. but Because is it really... I mean... I, if I remember correctly, when they when they switched universes, at least and you know, I I, was, I I don't remember if they changed it in the in the uh, remastered, but at least in the original, it was the same model that was used. So uh, as far as the Enterprise, so where are you getting that from, Captain? Uh, Cobra, yes. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't the ISS Enterprise from TOS use the model from the cage? That's that's what that's what. Captain uh, Captain Foley was just saying, I don't, I don't remember that. Uh, Sci-Fi Sis says, check my previous comment. I hate it when you guys say that, so because now I gotta like scroll back and find your previous comment. And where is it? It must have been a what? Uh, how? Um, where? Where is it? Sci-Fi. Hold on. <sighs> Let's see. And I'm looking. I'm still looking. Man, how long ago was this comment? Make me make the Thomas Ponce. Okay, Batman versus his rival, the Joker, intelligence-wise. Um, that's a tough one because Joker is so crazy. Um, but I would have to say raw intelligence, I would probably have to give it to the bat. Um, but they're really, I mean, they're kind of opposites, but I wonder if they will be drinking tea and chatting. Uh, no idea what you're talking about there, Ender. I must've missed something. Um, got to run. All right, Charles, thank you for joining us. You have a wonderful evening. And so you think the ISS had a spire sticking out? I see. I don't remember that, but I think Captain Foley is would confirm that. So, and while I do love the original series and know a lot about the original series, I would defer to Captain Foley as far as his level of knowledge. Um, Hugo Boss produced a Nazi uniform. Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, yes, mirror directly. Yes, us defined was the cage model. Oh, okay. Um. Yes, spikes in the Bazaar's uh, large bridge module and the larger deflector dish on the Mirror Universe Enterprise. Now, is that just from In a Mirror Darkly, or is that in the um, uh, in the uh, original Mirror Mirror? Because in the original Mirror Mirror, I thought it was just the exact same model. Autobots, transform and roll out. 
That would be Captain George's version of Optimus. Sterling Archer would kick Riker's ass. Uh, I would dare say you are completely right. Especially if he's drunk. A Scotsman versus Klingon blood wine. Oh, he, he, uh, a Scotsman wins against any form of alcohol. And so let's take a look here. So Captain Foley sent me a picture. You're right. I'm going to have to rewatch the episode to look for that, though. Um, so, just so you guys can know, and, I, and I'll, I'm big enough to admit when I'm wrong, but uh, let me see here. So, here's a picture uh, that Captain Foley just sent uh, via Facebook, and you can see the spires sticking out and the larger bridge module, um, which is really interesting. Um and in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I think that my digital copy of Star Trek is the remastered, but let's see if they, uh, they, they did that. And let's see. Oh, uh, now you see, you're sending me all these pictures while I'm trying to do stuff, man. You're messing with my head. You're hurting me, man. See, Captain Foley doesn't like you guys anymore, so he just keeps sending me stuff. And so, yeah, it looks like, uh, according to you and Remastered, it looks like it's there too. So let's, uh, let me see here. We're going to, we're going to settle this once for all, even though I, I'm not fighting you over, over it because I think you're right. But let me go to, um, dry movies, science fiction, Star Trek, TOS. Ooh, which season was Mirror Mirror? Uh, let me see here. Uh, let's see. Don't look like it's in. Why would I question you, Captain? Well, I, I said I would defer to your knowledge. I mean, you know. Season four. Now that's in a mirror darkly is Enterprise season four. I'm talking about the original Mirror Mirror. I um and so let me see. How did this is spinal tap get in there? Um Season 40, yeah, that's right. There it is, season two, episode four. Love that classic lightning effect. All right, so. And so now, let me, now that I found the right episode, let's bring that up. So, skip ahead. So we got them beaming up. Those cool 60s visual effects. All right, here we go. Oh, maybe, maybe not. Man, this is like taking forever. And real quick, just to hopefully avoid. Uh, yeah, I know with, with CBS, we'll, we'll take a moment here to uh, say, hey, hopefully that CBS will not demonetize because this is commentary and criticism on Star Trek. This is not a violation of copyright. However, CBS is a company run by dicks and let's take a look here all right here we go so there's the enterprise and you're right yeah the the mirror version has the spires while the uh, original universe does not that is interesting i you know it's funny i've watched this episode at least a million times and i never noticed that Hmm. Um, uh, let's see. It's a company run by dicks. You just have to offer commentary while you air short clips and pray. Yeah. 
Uh, at CBS is, yeah. I've gotten DMCA'd by them so many times. It is your job to know these things, Captain. But you know, that's why you should hire me to be your intern. Um, tell me why we hate to admit that Germans had nice military uniforms during World War II. I, they had awesome uniforms. Um, so, yes, Mirror Enterprise had nipples. That, that is true. So, uh, Enderman should really like the Mirror Universe then. Never question me again, says Captain Foley. Well, Captain... I, I, I believe in the uh, the Reagan uh, philosophy of trust, but verify. And that's all I was doing, my friend. And so I, I do think that's funny that I never even noticed it. Um, do you find Sauron to be a good villain, or is he more iconic than anything else? For me, at least, he is unforgettable, but what do you think? Sauron himself, no, I didn't think he was a particularly good villain. Uh, he's just like, he's just this disembodied eye that's, I see you, and that's pretty much all he ever says. Um, what I've noticed is that 15 second clips is the way I edit it, does not trigger them. Yeah, I, if you keep it relatively short, also you want to avoid clips that are heavy on music. Because music triggers the, the bots very quickly. Um... Uh, the, when I was in the in the Navy, the reason we called the black uniforms the Navy blue was to avoid the correlation with Nazi uniforms, which were black. I didn't know that. Um, and as far as, yeah, as far as talking, you know, here's the funny thing is, uh, is that, yes, when you are talk as far as uh, commentary, criticism, and parody are all protected speech under the law. However, here's what happens is company files a DMCA because they see a copyright match. And that's fine. Their bots are programmed to do that because they want to make sure that it's not you're, you're stealing their copyright. You file a counterclaim saying, no, this is fair use. Every other company, and I'm talking, I've had dealings with Fox, with Disney, with Universal, um, with NBC, with Paramount, all of them, as once I file the uh, the counterclaim, they then say, oh, yeah, you're right, fair use, have a nice day. CBS doesn't do that. CBS pushes it because the next step, if they refuse to acknowledge that it's fair use, is you have to take them to court. And they know damn well that I'm just some random YouTuber. I can't afford to take them to court. So... You will never win versus Captain Foley with Starship knowledge. You're probably right about that. How much longer until the 3D print is done? Probably about 10 hours. And so, although fortunately this time it's actually sticking to the bed plate, so it should work this time. I've, this is actually my third attempt today. Here are the first two. Um, and both of them have the same problem where um, the one, one corner warped and pulled away from the bed plate. That's a common problem with 3D printing. And I'm still learning uh, a lot of this stuff. So uh, one trick that I learned today uh, was that, uh, like I already knew that a lot of people put uh, painter's tape, which you can see on the bed there. They put painter's tape on there to help, uh, help it stick. But if you wipe down the painter's tape with rubbing alcohol, it greatly in increases the, uh, the stickiness for some reason. Uh, he uses this, this ring to cover all the lands of second darkness. He's singing it, singing it, all the thought he's is bent on it. I, well, Enderman, I'm sure Sauron is great in the books, but in the movies, he's just a disembodied eye. The JJ Prize is not a thousand meters long. Well, again, uh, I would defer to Captain Foley. Uh, we all know the, the JJ verse is... You know, the, there's some discrepancies with the original designs, and uh, uh, I think they made it way too big. I think that they made the Kelvin too big. I mean, the Kelvin should have had a crew of like, you know, three, four hundred people, but you know, they had eight hundred people on that ship. Whatever. But yeah, Liger says going away now. Trek, thank you for the impressions, and hope your back feels better soon. Take care, everyone. Take care, Liger fan. Yeah, me too. I hate when my back goes out. Thousand meters long, it's dumb. Yeah, that that is. I mean, that's just crazy. Uh, wow, you made that thin line sound so boring. 
that you wow you made that line sound so boring say with Ian McKellen's voice which line are you talking about Enderman oh wait wait who uses the ring because that line that line is that from the book because I don't even remember that from the movies the mirror NX-01 had pulse phasers and a tractor beam. The regular NX-01 had beam phasers and a grappling arm. Um, so that's kind of weird. Then the mirror NX was more advanced, but the mirror constitution is less advanced, even though the mirror universe had a constitution class starship a hundred years before they were invented. That doesn't make sense. Enderman says, or 400 or 500, who cares? Well, actually, uh, Enderman... Trek, uh, you know, it, it, when you're talking to Captain Foley, who switched back to his Trek Yards account for some reason, I guess he's just trying to make sure that he proves to everybody how mighty he is. Uh, that yes, uh, the the JJ Prize is for some reason a thousand meters long, which is just yeah, that's stupid. If the Cage Enterprise was in Mirror Mirror, does that mean the older version of the Defiant being in the DS9 Mirror Universe was a callback? Well, uh, that's. The older version of the Defiant being in the DS9 mirror verse. Uh, was the older version of the Defiant in the DS9 mirror verse? I don't remember the Defiant showing up in DS9. I remember it showing up in Enterprise. But, you know, I could be completely confused. Uh, the JJ Prize had to be four to 500 meters because the windows and the edge of the saucer is only four decks. Well, that's the problem, Jay, is that you have, and this is something that I know, you can go back and look at the, at the archives on Trek Yards. They've talked about this at length, is that there is direct contradiction in as far as the size of the ship based on windows and other things. It doesn't add up, but that's just because they did a very piss poor job as far as the design work. A thing that is about to happen is not, that has not happened since the Elder Days. The Ents are going to wake up and they will find their ways are strong. I, I do remember that one. How big is the Enterprise J uh, in JJ Trek? <laughs> Mine billion meters, probably. Well, I thought the Kelvin was kind of neat. I generally ignore JJ Verse stuff. Yeah, I like the Kelvin. Uh, I like. I thought the Kelvin was a cool design. It really, and I don't know how you felt about it, Captain Foley, but for me, the Kelvin was very reminiscent of the uh, Starfleet Technical Manual Scout ship, just with a secondary hull then attached above the primary hull, and I loved that idea. Uh, in fact, I think they should have dumped the secondary hull uh, just to make it more like the uh, like the classic scout ship. Uh, the Defiant from DS9 series, the battleship, anti-Borg ship, when they were forced in the Prime Universe to help them fix it, to fix it is an insta the fix its instability issue. Um, I'm you, you got me a little bit lost, but then I haven't watched the Mirror Universe episodes of DS9 in a long time because I didn't like them. Um, I'll be honest with you, I didn't like what they did with the Mirror Universe on DS9 at all. Because, um, yeah. The uh, the problem with it is that it I didn't like the idea that the Empire collapsed and that now you had all these other powers or it was just took all the fun out of it. Um, Kelvin was a nice ship, I agree. Um, bring me Thanos, says Enderman. Uh, the thing I absolutely hate about the JJ Verse and Discovery or, or Disco for Foley, uh, STD, sorry Foley, it's STD, it's a pox upon Trek, uh, are the smart windows. I, I'm not a fan of that, especially in, in STD. Um, because the, the smart windows is a JJ Verse thing, and I was actually okay with it in the JJ Verse. However, I'm not okay with it being in supposedly the Prime Universe. I was also not okay with them being on the Franklin. Um, because now it's like, so does that mean the NX-01 should have had a smart window? Why would you have a ship that's older than the NX-01 with a more advanced view screen? That doesn't make any sense. Um, the Kelvin looks like a modified heavy destroyer for science and survey missions. If it's a science and survey ship, it's not a heavy destroyer, though. Um, Mr. Miles, you don't remember the episode? No, I, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the details of it. So, I mean, I, 
I genuinely did not care for what they did in the mirror universe. I remember that the Cardassians were still in charge. Uh, well, and wait, where were they? Or and the Bajorans were like dicks, and humans were enslaved. And I just, bleh, I didn't care for it. Infinity War funny quotes. This is my friend Tree. I am Groot. I am Steve Rogers. I love that. That that was one of the best moments for Captain America right there. Uh, was when when he said I am Steve Rogers to I am Groot. I absolutely love that moment because that is the one thing that Steve Rogers would absolutely say. Um, all right, guys. So I do need to wrap it up because it is after midnight and I got to get up in a few hours and hope that my back is working tomorrow. Um, tell me, are you ready to rip apart the next season of STD? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And so, while, by the way, just so you guys know, my schedule is going to be changing in a few weeks. Um, so, uh, I believe October 21st, my schedule is changing and I'm not sure how I'm going to do live streams then because, uh, that's, I'm not going to be working a split shift anymore. And because I'm not going to be working a split shift anymore dar during my work days, so I won't be able to do an, uh, afternoon live stream. So, and now Mecha Random comes in. Hi, Mecha Random. Now that I'm trying to sign off jerk by the way mecha random um i know you know who track yards is and uh we track yards is uh actually we proven that he now I, I know you've probably seen track yards channel which means that you know for a fact that captain foley is not funny uh you know he's, he's kind of boring he tells dad jokes at best um however we did get to hear him uh say well this oh i've done far worse than kill you anti-trekker i've hurt you and i wish to go on hurting you i shall leave you as you left me as you left the commander marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead youtube channel buried in comments buried in comments <laughs> all right so um derek throws a pound into the chat thank you sir sir i really do appreciate it. wants to see the turtis well then the turtis shall be yours my friend so let me bring that screen up so that we can give you what you're after here <laughs> What? Is this right? And also, Thomas throws four ninety nine in the chat. Says, "Are you and Laura going to do reviews of the STD shorts Uber number three? We have not specifically discussed it. We did talk about we we're going to commit to doing the uh, the all the regular episodes of STD, but we hadn't specifically talked about the shorts yet. So I." don't know for sure i'm willing to but i'll have to confer with lauren i haven't talked to him this week so i don't know but in the meantime uber chat number three is all yours the dark turd and it froze of course because why not hold on well we'll start that over because the computer hates me today <laughs> one still gets me every single time all right guys thank you all so much for being awesome and and for hanging out with me all this time i truly do appreciate it and have a great night morning whatever poop humor isn't is very immature grow up it isn't funny well 
Yeah, it is. It's poop. <laughs> It's the Anti-Trekker. We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. I have got something better! <laughs> oh man, just when I thought nobody was going to throw anything in because James hasn't... I, if anybody knows where James is, I, I genuinely don't know. And I know he, he kind of disappeared right about the time the storm hit. And so I'm, I'm genuinely concerned. If any of you know who he really is, just let him know I want to know he's okay. I mean, you know, if, if he's mad at me, that's fine. I just want to make sure that he's actually all right. So uh, Trolita says, grow up. And then she says, poop. First of all, Trillian, have you not seen my avatar? I mean, just saying, if you, if you can't take poop jokes, probably shouldn't watch my channel. Just just saying. I love you. I'm glad you're here. But, you know, i got to be honest. And and so let's throw some... We, we, need to, we need to roast some porg because there is absolutely nothing tastier than some freshly roasted porg once I find the stupid oh that's right it's listed as where is the stupid there is Swedish mm -hmm. Borg 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 you do 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 Borg you chip in chip in de Borg Borgy come here Borgy chippy chippy Borgy And I got to say, Trek, uh, Trek Arts, thank you so much. I do truly appreciate uh, the uh, $2.79 of your fake Canadian money. And it's funny because the first time I got a Canadian Super Chat, it threw me off because it says CA and then two seventy nine. So I was like, why is it telling me just because the person's from California? I, I didn't understand that. But then I didn't know that's how they did it with foreign currencies. But you know, Trek Yards, the rules on this channel, meaning that you can pick any of the Super Chat rewards, 1 through 15 right here. So if you want to see one of them, throw it out there, my friend. You want to see Lore Reloaded all sexy? You got it, my friend. Because you know what? Poop jokes may not be funny, but this certainly is. <laughs> Hey, you want to learn about Jesus? There's no such thing as hooker client confidentiality. Oh. Yes, and, and there's nothing better than seeing that just before you go to bed. Just as you're drifting off to sleep, I want every one of you, especially you, Captain Foley, as you're closing your eyes tonight, in, you know, after you're done with this live stream, and you're going to lie down, and then you're going to see that walking towards you in your mind's eye over and over and over It's the Anti-Trekker. We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties.